What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hood podcast slash webcast because I don't know how you're consuming this content. I'm your host as always. My name is Jimmy. Um, as we always start the show, we want to say thank you to everybody that supports what we got going on in the community as well as online um, because everything is growing as usual. And just want to say thank you because this is about building people. This is about showing people that look just like us that are doing amazing things. So we appreciate the support uh, you know, of our content because it's all positive, not a lot of ratchet stuff, you know. Not that I, you know, just like all the ratchet stuff. I mean, you know, I always tell you guys I love the shave room too. But listen, we're doing all positivity over here. And we want to say thank you because you guys are showing us tremendous support. As always, I got my co-host with me, my brother, Corey. Corey, how are you, sir? Man, living la vida loca. How you feeling, man? I can't complain to nobody listening. It's fair and partly cloudy. But as usual, <laughs> all right, we have a special guest with us this evening. Um, this is a, a, a sister who's doing amazing things in the Philadelphia area in terms of real estate. She's in the stock market investing. She actually came out to our event a couple weeks ago. And what impressed me the most is she had her son with her, right? And he was picking up on the information like fast. And I was very impressed by that to the point where in the middle of our talk, he went on the phone and like start buying stock in the middle of us talking. I was like, okay, so I see, I see where he's headed. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and mom is out there doing amazing things. So without further ado, I want to um, welcome Jasmine Williams. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How y'all doing today? Oh man, we, we doing amazing. So um Jasmine, we see you still in your real estate office right now. You know, you you out here hustling in the real estate game. Um tell us a little bit about your background. Um, where are you from? What school did you go to? Uh, you know, what kind of education you have? So um I grew up in the East Oak Lane section of the of Philadelphia, and then I went to engineering and science for high school. I actually finished, my mom got remarried, so we moved to Minnesota um for my last two years of high school. So I finished high school there came back to um, Philadelphia, went to Drexel, um, and then I had my daughter. So I didn't finish. Um, so I really had to start living life hard and fast and, and, and making some money fast. So um, started in property management. I started managing properties in West Philadelphia. Um, that was like my first real job. And then when I had my son, I needed to stay home with him. So I decided to kind of start business and go into business myself. Okay. And that's when I got my real estate license. So I've been licensed uh, for 11 years now. And, um, you know, we, it's, been a, it's been a road. Um, but right now I have a, um, a team of five agents and I manage them and manage our business. We are number one. And our um, Keller Williams, I'm sorry, number two, we're number two um, in our Keller Williams um, office. Um, we're part of the K, um, KW Philly brand. Um, and, you know, we just, we just out here. We just, you know, okay. I'm an investor. I'm an investor. Um, so we do, um, I have um, six doors now and then I do Airbnb for one of my units. So the business model that I'm building out is basically duplexes so getting duplexes one unit is airbnb one is a long-term rental and it's been pretty lucrative oh that's an interesting strategy that's an interesting strategy right there i never heard no one with that strategy um a couple questions i know property management what did you learn uh about the business when you were just working in property management oh my goodness i learned so much that's i mean honestly um being in property management uh, taught me how to interact with people and realize that real estate is really, um, is, is really a people business. It's not, you know, we got the contracts and the things like that and those things exchange hands, but it's, it's people. It's, it's the most intimate part of your life when you're dealing with where they live. So being a property manager, my first job was managing a building that was for women that were transitioning from being homeless. Okay. So I had to deal with all types of not only just managing the, the maintenance of the property and the upkeep and, the, you know, that type of thing, but manage their social, the social service end of it um, to make sure that, you know, they didn't go back to being homeless or, you know, they were able to get jobs and things like that. So it really built, you know, I was, I think I was 20 at the time. It built my compassion um, because I didn't, you know, I, my mom is a, my mom was a single, raised me as a single parent and um, just, you know, she, I was sheltered a lot. So I didn't realize like life is real and it'll come and it hit you hard. Man, you know listen. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Cause people, so, a lot of times people live in their bubbles. Like I tell people all the time, um, when you talk to people online they're like, Oh, no one does this and no one does like, man, people out here are struggling. Like you can live in your bubble all you want to, you know, they like, my, I, 
I never forget one, and I and I don't, I don't know if welfare has changed much, but it used it was one person would get two hundred and five dollars from the state, sixty two dollars of that would have to go to us for rent because it was subsidized, and then the rest you had to live off that for the rest of the month. You got some food stamps, but that's it because you know you're a single person. And it's just like, talk about management. Like, you yeah. got to make sure, you, you know, you get a meals. You live in a, it was a single room, a single, um, what they call an SRO, a single room occupancy. So that means that you, you had like a mini fridge, so you couldn't really buy meats for long term because if you put your meat in the community refrigerator, it might get stolen, like yeah. all types of yeah. People don't really realize it, you know, and it, and it really comes down to family, too, because if you don't have no family, you know, if you got family and you get 205 a month, you could go live with your aunt or something like that. But these mm-hmm. people, um, these women, unfortunately, had kind of burnt those bridges, so they didn't have anybody, you know, yeah. and so we built a really good community there. And I, I'm in contact with them. In fact, one of the um, the ladies, one of my first tenants, she had she had hit me up on Facebook and was like, "I'm doing so good now," and you know that type of thing. So it was just like really building those relationships helped me build the compassion and deal with the first time buyers that I deal with because not that they're you know and maybe not in that income bracket, but we we all have the same struggles. And they're not necessarily they've not taught how to budget or mm-hmm. taught how to manage money and so the program that I roll out is really um, catered to people that want to make that change to be able to buy homes budget their money so make their was, money grow kind that, of was a, been on that was a huge learning yeah. experience for you and it helped you in business moving yeah. forward I say it was, it was life changing life change I mean literally like it was it used to just be me and my mom I would go to engineering and science come home my mom like make sure you get a, I, I she wouldn't even let me ride on the subway I had to ride the C bus all the way up i and then i would walk home she'd tell me to call she was um she was uh getting her master's at the time when i was in high school and so i would have to come home i would call my aunt no i would have to call her then my aunt would check in with me like in like two hours but like you gotta be home so i was just used to just being home in minnesota like I ain't no friends. So, 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 so you were sheltered and then you like went from being sheltered to like being exposed to some of uh... Absolutely. I just, I never knew. I never, you know, the, I d- dealt with people that um, OD'd off of drugs. After I managed the, 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 um, the women's building, I had to manage um, property over on Allegheny. Somebody decided to have a romantic night in. They had the, the uh, candles on the mattress. Whole whole uh, three units went on. Well, his unit went on fire. But, you know, when the sprinkler system comes, sprinkler system, let, and it went down three levels. Wow. We got a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the fire, they calling me in the middle of the night. I got, like, a an infant, and my, my daughter was a toddler. And I'm, like, down there, like, what the heck is going yeah, like yeah. life will hit so you, you went right, right into so the trenches you went right into the trenches, I was in the <laughs> trenches. I mean, some of the some of the craziest buildings in philadelphia but you know it it, it grew me because it like me, i said yeah. I, it was just like my mom she always um she manages law firms so she was managing a law firm at that time and then I just didn't know that part of life, I, you know, so it, it, it was one of those things that was very humbling and, and I have a better um, understanding on how, you know, people call, they be stressed out, you know what I mean? It's stress yeah. because you don't know, you know, your landlord getting on your nerves. I'm like, man, don't be a landlord. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm a landlord. <laughs> I'll be, be telling my tenants, like, you know, we got to help you get your credit together. Like, you can't buy this one because this is for my kids, but I can hook you up to got be able you. to buy something. You know, um, for the people watching that are, aren't from the Philadelphia area, Philadelphia is unique because, like, um, I've read several reports about like the poverty in the city, right? So we have the poverty in the city, but also like we have one of the highest numbers of six-figure earners in the city at the same time as being one of the poorest cities. Which means that it's literally a tale of two cities. We have like, you know, there's people doing tremendous in our city. Let don't get me wrong, like you know, yeah. but then there's, there's people other- eating and then there's people starving. And ain't yeah, nobody yeah. Ever there's nobody in the middle. Either you doing well or you not. Like a city is crazy like that. It's crazy. I I would definitely agree, man. I 
I it's sometimes it it makes me um, really sad though because it's like so many people that don't know about their credit. In fact, I talked to a young man. He said he said he know knew you guys. Um, I talked to him earlier and he was just telling me like he's trying to, you know, get his credit together and things like that. And he was just like, he just doesn't, he didn't know. I was like, well, you know, you got this. He was like, oh, they put that on my credit. Like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But the information is information. People, people, um, people just don't know. And they're just trying to figure it out. And I think that is, you know, it's our job to really help them you know, just put that education out there. That's why I use my platform as small as it may be um, to really get it out there to the masses. I got so many people inboxing me. I started trading like maybe maybe a week before I had came out to. And by the way, you're being humble right now. You're you're small. I see you out there. I told you, like, you you do a great job of marketing. Like, you just do. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But, but no, I, I, um, I, uh, I started trading and I posted, you know, just like what I was doing because I, I still don't know what I'm doing. I be, <laughs> I miss Max and Corey, like, am I doing this right? He's like, yo, Jazz, you gotta chill. Like, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, like, you, yeah, yeah, like, I, wa- I watch people blow through a couple, I, I watch people blow through a couple accounts. Like, you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing before you, before you get you know, because them, them first couple wins is like intoxicating, and then Yo. if you don't have a system <laughs> and you don't know what you're doing, you're going, you know, you, you'll get you'll got, you'll get fried, but you you doing it the right way, though, because I, I see how you go after the education, so yeah, that's what I'm saying, so right I'm definitely, I'm, I'm all for investing in education, right, because is I don't, you know, when you're in business, you take so many laws that you not really, you would rather somebody else's laws you learn from somebody else's laws just like somebody i would hope somebody learned from mine you know what i mean so yeah. i'm i'm all for paying for it that's why i was like when, when did you job because i'm gonna enroll because it's like i would rather um just sit here and learn it um i could have it on youtube while i'm doing you know what i mean something else and then just keep repetitive um mm-hmm. you know into it and then be able to you know be able to talk about it but I, I'm not all for losing money. But that that pharmaceutical stock I did, I, I bought a bunch of it today because oh. it was it was just listen. Was that's crazy because I saw you post about it and I went and looked at it. I'm like, oh okay, this is what she's talking about. And you know, just happened to come back. I'm like, yo, it went up like seventy percent in one day. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I said she got that's some. A nice, that's a nice little I said, bag. I said she got some inside information. Like, like where she get this one from? So yeah, I was like, I kept looking. So then. I, uh, I, you know, you know, you build relationships and a couple of people, I'm like, oh, got a couple of dollars, go ahead and put it on there and see what happens. And people coming back like, yo, and even the after hours, it was like, I think it's at like $8 now. So it was yeah. like, no, that's yeah. A, but to see that, but to think but, about but that. But no, I was intrigued. I was intrigued when, when I came to your workshop, I was more intrigued or actually more confident because the way that you guys talked about it is not is like you said you only lose when you sell so mm-hmm. Absolutely. you ain't really yeah you're it's not a- really losing if you're not taking that risk and i mean i i the options i'm still learning um corey had uh, connected me to someone so okay. i'm learning i'm in his classes and that's been that's been pretty good um, so you gonna have all sorts of streams of income, right? So you, so you, you got yeah, your, you got your. Yeah. Uh, I see what you're doing here, but let me ask you a question about that, right? So, uh-huh. business as an agent, um, you've built the team out. Um, how difficult was it? Like, were you originally a solo agent before you started building a team for a while? Yeah. So when I was a, when I started out, I was a solo agent. Um, I did everything from showing houses to doing all the paperwork to generating all the business um, to everything. Right. How long, now, how long were you a solo agent? Um, I guess probably about five or six years. Okay. I was part time. I was like half and half time for a little while. Um, and then I went full fledged. Um, and then, um, um, a guy I went to high school with, uh, Malik, Malik Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like my best friend. So he was like, no, we want to partner up and we were going to partner up and do, do something. But he and I have like the same big ideas. Like we're like thinkers and, 
innovative and you know how Listen, he is. And, no, Malik's you know, my about, guy. I, I had a two hour conversation <laughs> with Malik yesterday. We were, we were it's debating. It's so easy to have a two hour conversation uh, with Malik. We were debating <laughs> how soon autonomous cars will come here and like we're going back and forth with each that's other. That's all he talks about. Yeah, you know, you know, for two hours we're going back and forth. So that's my guy. So I definitely um yeah, understand what yeah, you're talking so, about. But yeah, so we're both like really big thinkers and we really like all for pulling our people in and pulling our people up. Um and sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's not so good because um our folks, um everybody wants to be the, the chief. And so with that, is it doesn't it doesn't really Sometimes it doesn't work out. So we decided that we would come under the same KW umbrella, but have our separate teams. So okay. I started my team because I knew that I, I needed to be laser focused. You know, Malik got a lot going on with his investments and, you know, things like that. So he focuses on the investment piece. But we do probably five or six deals a year together. You know what I mean? Because nice. he, he, got, he has all of the, um, the inventory you know, at any given time, I'm working with 25 to 30 buyers. So it just makes sense. He always yeah. has listings. So he'll call me first. When, as soon as he gets a listing, it's, you know, that's on the market, you know, he'll run it, you know, run it by me to make sure that I don't have anybody first. And then we, you know what I mean? So we're able yeah, to work yeah. together and then work in a, you know, a consultant all the time. Cause I consult his business. He consults on mine. Well, tell me about um, that, um, that, that, uh, that building of a team. How difficult was it to go from a solo agent to actually building your team? It was, it was tough. Um, the first, my first round that it wasn't too <laughs> successful um, because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of building. I'm like, look, everybody, I'm just all for like everybody just making money. Mm -hmm. And when you're building a team and you're building a business, that's not necessarily the way that it should be. It has to be like the business needs to profit first. Um, and so um, I hired a coach. I have a coach um, that basically, um, he's a biz he's a part of, he's a part of our business. Um, he, and he coaches me, um, on business structure on how to make sure that things are, are flowing. So right now, um, all I do is generate business because that's what I'm good at. Um, so I just, I generate business and I make relationships. I'm reaching out and I'm talking to buyers. I do have an assistant that, um, that, you know, basically, does the follow-up and, you know, make sure that our client care is good. And then I don't show homes anymore. So everybody's like, you're a realtor, you don't show homes? Nope, I don't. Um, I have showing agents that basically uh, get out and open the doors for me so that I can sit here and just keep generating business. Okay. And also it's a quality of life thing too, because my son and my daughter, my daughter just turned 18. She needs me. So she needs me to be home and she needs me to, you know, get her prepared yeah. for life. Um, so it's important. It was important to me to be able to be home. So I, you know, my showing agents, they're out now. And, you know, the, the good thing about that is that clients don't have to wait for me to say, oh, I'm not at swim practice with my son or, oh, yeah. I got a buyer agency appointment in the office. I can literally text one of our one of our people and, you know, we're on a group text and like whoever grabs them, that's the person that's designated to that to their um that client until the end of the process. Gotcha. That's dope. Um now the question is, uh, are you looking to build that out further or five is like your number? What are you looking to do with that um, business? I I wanna build um a buyer agent. So right now showing agents are really working in like a part time capacity, mostly the evenings you know, weekends, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I would probably, I'm looking for a buyer agent that kind of, that can kind of um, eventually take over my role um, as being a lead generator. And, the, you know, they, they, in real estate, they call it the rainmaker because literally I can, you know, just start making phone calls. and like, you want to buy a house? Come on, let's go. <laughs> um, and then I know how to, um, and then I know how to fix people's credit too. So with, with me doing that, it makes it it makes our team really attractive because what I did was I built a separate credit repair company so that I could fix people's credit that wanted to purchase a home and build that relationship and that bond with them throughout the process. Oh, so we're fully, and then put it right in your system, right? We fully automated. Um, you know, we have processors. We have an attorney that's on staff you know, in that particular company that, you know, if there's an issue or something like that that comes up, we can get the thing off of their credit, whatever it is, um, and be able to just kind of build it out. Um, am I looking to expand right now? 
Uh, typically, we can only handle up to about 100 credit repair clients and, like I said, about 25 buyers. Any given time, I'll have like maybe two or three listings. I'm not listing heavy. I'm more, I'm on the buyer side because I just, I know how difficult it was when I bought my first house um, years ago. My agent was just like, just kind of right. left you. you know what I mean? so, so that's interesting. I'm, so I, I got a couple questions based on that. So obviously, you you read the millionaire real estate agent. And you follow on that playbook, right? Yeah, that's my model. Yeah, that's my yeah. yeah. I, I actually used to work at KW years ago. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. with uh, Oliver Millwood, but oh but yeah, I, I know um, Oliver. Yeah, but anyway, so I worked at um I worked at Keller Williams. I'm familiar with that, but it looks like you're running the playbook pretty well. But you're very enterprising. So you started the credit repair business. You got this going on. Where did you get that from? Like, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Just fell on your lap? Like, where did you see this at? And my my mom, like I said, you know, she was always in corporate. My dad. Um, he was a contractor, so he would, you know, like do little handy work around. I don't know where I really, I think it's the independence and just ownership. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like when I was, even when I was younger, um, you know, and, and trying to maintain a job is just like, it's the hardest thing in the world because you've got to live by someone else's rules. If I need to leave, I'm just out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, you know, my kids are, my, uh, my, my daughter's father got killed um, early, early on. So it, I was by myself, like literally by myself for, since forever. So it was important to me um, to be able to build a life for them okay. that not only would I be able to provide a decent life, but also be able to be there for the stuff because when I was first um, as a solo agent, I was missing the, the ball games and the, you know, the, the dance recitals and things like that because I always had to work. So that's, that's, that's where the team structure came from because I needed to be able to design a life that my business was still running, but I was able to be there for, for my kids. Smart, smart. Yeah, so you said, you said something crazy when you said design a life. Like most people don't understand that concept of design a life. Like you said, this is what I need my life to look like. And then you set out to design your life to look like that. And most people wouldn't even you, think you know, to do that. You know why, Core? Why that's interesting? Because this, like we talked about that with uh, Jalil when he's on here. Um, lifestyle design is about you. For some people, like they'd rather have a nine to five, right? So that's, that's kind of like why our thing is um, we don't do job shaming no matter what you do for a living. Um, oh, no. it's, it's about ownership. And the reason I say that is because... Um, you know, there's some of the comments I see. Lifestyle design is about what works for you. You figured out exactly what works for you. And it's brilliant the way you put things together. For some people, like, like some people will tell you, like, yo, I'm lazy. And that's why I tell people, you can be lazy and still own things, right? You can go work your nine to five. You can work at McDonald's. You can work at a car wash. But you have to design your lifestyle to whatever way works for you. Yeah, absolutely. And people, people I think that people don't realize it. I, you know, we talk to... You know, in my industry, I want you to have a job because I can get you a, a lot easier if you got if you got a, a W two. So I, I'm never going to job shame. But at the at the same time, it's like okay, you know, when I'm sitting down with people and they're saying, "Well, I don't have the down payment," I'm like, okay, let's figure out. You know, so we'll sit and do a budget. And you know, most people are really like half a paycheck away from being on the street. And that's reality. So I'm just like, okay, well, what can you do um, to to uh, to make to make money on the side some way? And so we started this thing called Side Hustle Saturday. And basically, people come and you know, I'll talk, and then other I have you know friends that are entrepreneurs and vending machines and all that type of stuff. And um, we'll just come and kind of brainstorm, like, well, what can you do? What are you good? People like, of course, everybody. I'm sure you guys get this. Oh, I'm not really good at anything. Like, you're yeah. good at something. It's you know what I mean? Yeah. You and I had this young lady, and she was just like, well, I was the first person to go to college in my in my family, and because of that. Um, she wrote an ebook on like first generation. Man, that ebook is doing so well. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she put it together and she put it on Amazon and it's just like, like this is a thing. You know what I mean? Like, and so I think that um, if we start making our or not making, but um, 
instructing our people on how to know and 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 say like listen y'all we we literally can do anything Mm -hmm. um like really just like showing them the way like these people i met i've been meeting so many people online that are doing so many amazing things and it's just like this one little like book or course or you know uh, the guy that the options course i was telling you about Mm Corey, like like he just said and he recorded it on his ipad and now he's selling it at like 70 bucks and i know he he was at like 100 downloads and that was like a couple weeks ago so he just he made seven thousand dollars real quick you know what i mean like and and, and that's one of the reasons that one of the reasons we have this platform because we recognize the same thing people are doing amazing things out there in all walks of life um, mm-hmm. and, and so it's a matter of, and it, what, one thing you said was interesting is about like working on their budget. So my wife helps people with their budgets all the time. And, and what, oh, I find, cool. okay. what I find is that most people have no idea how much money they spend. When they start to sit down and write their budget out, a lot of times they're in they shock. Start, oh, God. These men, I can't believe it. Like this lady, no lie, last, last week, and I talked to her last week and she, um, she, her, her addiction was Pepsi and Amazon. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Amazon. I think Amazon got it sold, though. This is how Pepsi really took over her life. Now she works at a hospital, and and she works overnight. And so she would grab a Pepsi so she could stay up. When she went into Wawa to grab the Pepsi, what else you get with a Pepsi? Bag of chips, yeah, some candy, another drink, a water, uh-huh. all this stuff. She grabbed all this stuff so the pepsi that costs what 253 dollars which is expensive in itself but then you go on and grab the rest of the stuff she's spending 10 12 13 dollars a night on on yeah. the on the wall run right yeah we get the budget she like yeah i don't i mean if only i could save a hundred dollars a month like yo, if you stop drinking the pepsi you had a hundred dollars right there and then, the, and then she was going on Amazon and she was just clicking. I'm like, sis, what are you buying? She was like, I don't know what I'm buying on Amazon. But what she did, we, we check, I check in with her like every two, three weeks and she stopped Amazon. And so as a reward, I sent her Amazon credit card. I was like, a, a gift card. I'm like, I know you, you got to get your fix. Just get your fix, but get off. She was like, I promise. I'm only going to spend this $25. But she was just like, <laughs> addicted and people don't realize yeah. how much money they spend on just mindless things my coach had me do a, um an exercise where i took my um printed out my three months of bank statements and just started highlighting in different um different categories so one was a need the other was a um a luxury and the other was like something that's like pertaining to a lifestyle and when I started l- looking at the luxuries, luxuries are like going out to eat or, you know, things that don't, I don't need to function. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was a lot of pink, <laughs> you know, highlight there. And then uh, when you look at the needs, it's like, okay, we, we got the needs down to a science. But I found that, you know, I listen to Audible. I listen to a lot of uh, Audible books. Mm-hmm. I had two Audible accounts. I don't even know how that happened. Wow. Like, <laughs> and then, like stuff like that. So the, so the budget... Um, people don't they they come in kicking and fighting. They don't want to do that budget. But you know, but when they the, Amazon got something, I had to I had to like literally take my cards off. I just took my cards off because okay. I, I, I found myself like it's when, something about it's you know, that gratification when you come when you hit, and they see that black stripe on the box. Like yo, uh, I don't even know what it is. Like it could be I could order like pencils. It could be something stupid. But that black <laughs> stripe, <laughs> tell you that black like, stripe is like I need a, yo. I need a hundred. It gives you an emotional feeling. Like, like Amazon Prime gives you an emotional feeling when you see that black stripe on a box. It's, it's, it's <laughs> something about it. So it's just like um, just building those habits, that budget piece. That whenever we do that exercise with the clients, they're like, Jason, I cannot believe how much money I spend on, you know, taking an Uber, Uber Eats. That's another one. You know, oh, man. I, I I don't think on Uber Eats I've ever spent less than like forty dollars. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot of money. No, because the sandwich be like two dollars. By the time they add all the fees on, it'd be like forty four. Like, what am I paying? It's for? like, it, it right. So you gotta really like it's it when you do that budget. 
it, it, it sets the tone. We don't, we don't repair your credit unless you do the budget. And the okay. reason why is because I repair your credit and get everything off and I get you a credit card and you don't know how to use it. We're going to be right back here. And then you're going to be going online talking about, she ain't fix my <laughs> so it's Going like, in circles. You know, so for the people out there, like either listening or watching, uh, one thing you could do at home right now is like write out a budget. Like you know, see where your money is going. <laughs> see where your please, money is going. Pretty please. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question about your investment. All right. So you got into real estate investing. That's a natural progression as someone who sells property. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. and you were telling me at the event, you said that you know you're an Airbnb now. That's one thing I've never done. Um, I'm interested in it. How did you make that transition to Airbnb? What, what you know made you want to do that, and so, how's it working um, out so far? Oh God, it's going, it's, it's it's doing really well. But um, the reason why I did Airbnb, Airbnb is because at the end of the year um, last year, and I'm just a new Airbnb participant, so okay. we opened the Airbnb um, January first. So we opened it New Year's Day, and. Um, Last year, you know, with the investing, kind of when you do the when you do the renovations, I like I like to do the renovation. When you do that renovation, you kind of just kind of give it to the tenant, and then you never see it again. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I just felt like I needed to do something and do a project. And I um, I was able. I'm I'm really blessed to have a lot of good relationships. But one of my best relationships is um, with the interior designer. Her name is Kamran. Nicole and Karan, um, basically, I text her like, hey, I'm thinking about doing an Airbnb. Um, I need furniture. And she stages and she does a lot of, um, you know, a lot of interior design stuff. She's a, a developer and an investor herself. But what she did was she basically let me um, just learn how to design with her. Um, and so she did a lot. Most of it, I said she did like probably 80%, but she let me learn that 20 because I needed to be able to make it functional. Okay. With an Airbnb, it's not necessarily just having your furniture there. You got to have it so that people, if they want to have a cup of coffee, they got some mugs in the, in the uh, cabinet or, you know, um, just made it, made it livable for that, you know, for the, for the guests. And so the hospitality thing for, for me is just really relaxing. It's very, very lucrative, lucrative completely lucrative um but it's very relaxing just to kind of make a home for someone so i have a cleaning service that goes in and then um depending on schedule i'll go by and i'll make like one day i was um i made a, a towel animal and put it on the bed like just little little touches yeah, yeah, like, like, <laughs> um, you're, you're running your little your own little hotel um yeah, so, but listen, but that's but that's a natural progression for you because you came from the property management piece and now you right, actually right. what's happening is going you going back to your roots. I'm going back to my roots and I swear I really we've had I mean even we've been open it's like almost it's three months now, right? Mm -hmm. But um I've had some craziness already. Um <laughs> had somebody I don't know if you guys saw my social media, somebody said yeah, I see your, your property is in a ducky spot. I'm going um, to just come through with my, my friends. And, oh, man, that was a crazy time. Uh -oh. It was a party. It's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. But other than that, it's really been, it's really been a rewarding experience. Um, and the profit on it, we're making right now, um, what I do that's a pro that may be a little bit different than an, than other Airbnb hosts is that I um, run my own SEO. I boost my own SEO for my listing. Okay. So for instance, if somebody um, if somebody is googling places to stay for the flower show, the flower show is this week. We're booked, um, and it's be because of the way my SEO is written. I might have I wrote a blog post and then I'll I'll run. Um, maybe like a five dollar uh, Facebook ad to target people that are coming in town for the for the flower show, because I want to be booked. I don't want to just be booked weekends. Gotcha. So we're booked weekends until maybe May now, uh -huh. like for graduation. Yeah. So what kind of, of um what kind of occupancy have you had in those couple in those three months? Like what, what's your occupancy rate like? So it's been. If you're talking about for the for the month, like for February, that was our full first month. We were booked. 
maybe let me just look. Um, we were we had a great month last month, um, okay. but we were booked maybe uh, I don't know, maybe I think it was like maybe eighteen nights last okay. month. Okay, nice. Um, and then. And that and that has you know something to do with um, just making sure that the SEO is popping because on Airbnb there's so many places on Airbnb people are are still searching for travel on Facebook so Facebook is really where we run nice. we run small ads and things like that so I run that as a separate business it's not just Air, Airbnb or its own unit that's why. I need to get more because the SEO, it, like now, I have people that are inboxing. We have a, um, we run a small um, Instagram page for it. People are inboxing like, oh, it's booked. I wanted to come in this weekend. You know what I mean? So I have to get more units to kind of fill oh, hold it on. in. So you have a page specifically for your Airbnb unit? Yes, yeah. it's called Master Sweet Living. Oh, yeah, I saw Master- that. I actually saw that. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. see that one. I got to go, I gotta go check that out. But So hold on. So is like a- I said, Master Sweet Living is its own entity, its own LLC. It runs independently. Um, and it, like I said, the reason why I did it is because I am who I am in this market. But really, all of our guests, we want the, you know, we get the guests that come from out of state. Nobody knows me there. You know what I mean? So it's like, they, we want them to come in because they see the beautiful pictures on Master Sweet Living. And like I said, the flower shows in town, the Broad Street Run, we're booked for those, those you know, those uh, events because listen. people come from all over the world. All right, so here's my so question. You got to think a little bit bigger, a little if bit you, bigger on, on Airbnb because a, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I'm on there and I'm not getting, no, you got to, yeah, you got to yeah. think a little bit. It's funny, right? So I'm working on a um, development now in Germantown and it's, um, okay. it's, a four, it's a four unit building. So. I was actually speaking to the students in the um, real estate development uh, course at uh, Jefferson University. So they're okay. They're, yeah, yeah. I heard. I saw that that um, the certificate and the um, degree behind that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they're actually like in this semester, they're taking my development project and using it as like their schoolwork. So okay. each of the students have to come up with like a pitch for what I should do with the building and you know present these presentations. So it was pretty fun, but. Um, one of the groups that was their suggestion airbnb and um like i said i've never done it but i'm very interested and they gave me like a, a couple different property management companies but it sounds to me like you manage your own but you said you have a cleaning company right so do they um, charge a flat so, rate or do they, how's that work yep the um the cleaning company comes in and she charges 52 two dollars a turn okay and she comes and she's connected in our in the app in the Airbnb app, so she knows when people are checking in and checking out, and she comes like clockwork. And she do, you know she does a, a number of units, but she comes and she makes sure that it's you know that it's cleaned. And um, if we got to take the unit offline for a little bit, she also provides a, a laundry service, so that way I'm not worried about getting the the you know because you have to do fresh sheets every time, so. She, you know, she kind of really maintains the, you know, the clean, cleanliness of the unit. So even with paying just, her that fee, even with paying her that fee, you still are, are much more yeah, profitable. I'll, just, I'll pay you that fifty-five dollars any time because I, the amount of money that I make, you know, without I can, you know, offline I can get into the numbers. Yeah, but, yeah I'm not gonna ask you your number. Only, only question I want to ask, I don't think you get actual number. How much more profitable is it running that unit Airbnb um, as opposed to just renting it out? Like, are you making a substantial amount more so, money? I, so remember, the duplex is downstairs. That tenant is paying, let's say that tenant is paying eight hundred. Mm-hmm. I'm making the goal is double that. I'm making one and a half times that right now. Wow! So in the next couple of months, in the next couple months and you know i like the i like that model because i'm not really the airbnb started with me just kind of as a hobby you mm-hmm. know what i mean so it's yeah. like if i make money, i make money and then my bottom tenant is really paying the note that i have on the on the um the duplex so i'm not worried about making a note because she you know she's a, yeah. a a you know a, a long-term tenant and you know she pays her bills so it's you know it, you can get creative with it. Um, yeah. I don't know that I would do a, a standalone Airbnb. Mm-hmm. I had 
the model that I'm looking at, it to me, I just unless you're down in like Center City, my my Airbnb is in Germantown. Mm -hmm. So unless you're in Center City, um, we I do have something coming up with traveling nurses, um, where they are gonna come and stay for like weeks at a time and they just wanna stay in a you know a unit. So I have to see how that works. But right now that duplex that's, that's that rule, that. every time I'm going for a refi now on it and <laughs> looking at those numbers like how? I'm like just yeah. like you some German town? I'm like, yeah, like that's amazing. I mean, I mean, congr congratulations on that too. That's amazing. And you got you. You, I'm just letting you know right now I'm be picking your brain offline. But um yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But but with that being said, listen, you're, you're, you're totally impressive because you're very enterprising. Like we said earlier, like you wouldn't set that up as its own entity. You got your credit repair entity. You got your real estate team. And now you're getting into the market, right? Um, so, I need you know, your help. Listen. I, I feel like we could blow this up, man. Absolutely. I feel like we can teach. We could teach so many more people how to do this. Yeah. Because there's so much money to be made. It's, oh man, I put when I posted that pharmaceutical thing. Like I said, you should see my post. Everybody like, oh, I bought a couple shares. Like people not. I feel like because they know me and they know my background, they're like, well, she could do it. I can totally do it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people are way more than me. Like, they, you know what I mean? You guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, people, people have this it. thing where. They think like the stock market or the real estate investing is for is not for me. It's for people that don't look like me, and it's just not true. It's just not true. I've I've been a I've been I've been a realtor for eleven years. I sold my cousin. I was, she was like one of my first, um, you know, buyers. And um, last summer we had like a ride along. We had people come down from New York and everything, and kind of like look at the uh, the you know the market here and investing and stuff here. And so she she tagged along and she was like, I always thought that uh, investing was for like men in suits or you know exactly like, exactly like, no like everybody that came had on like sweats and a mm -hmm. and a t shirt you know what I mean she's like these people have money I'm like yeah people really for the, all the people that really don't have it that need that yeah that's it, it's a lot of people especially in New York. Man, listen, that's the one thing real estate has taught me is to not right. judge a book price cover, right? Because Absolutely not. I made you the mistake as a, as a young agent, I would like, um, I, I was working for Mess of Realty at the time, um, years ago. Okay, yeah. And mm -hmm. I would do floor time when I first got in the game and I would see people come in, you know, three-piece suits, Mercedes, run to them. And I made the mistake one day. She taught me this lesson. She let me do it. I ran out, was showing a bunch of houses. I didn't even pre-qualify. I just ran out. Come, come to find out this dude ain't had no money. He was up to his nose in debt. And then I, I met another gentleman, had like a, a pickup truck with a dent in it. He had like dirty jeans on to come in. And this dude had like high six figures in his account. Yeah, yep. and, then I, and then I learned that, like, that, that lesson I never forgot. I'm like, man, you cannot judge a book by his cover in real estate. Okay, because... I, just closed, I just closed with an investor on Friday. And he's like, literally, that's what gave me the, the stock tip. He was like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I feel like, the good, the good people in the real estate community, they're like, it's like a real community. Like they share. And so he mm -hmm. was like, you want to be in the I was like, yeah. He was like, okay. He was like, buy this job. I was like, okay. And he was like, this is going, you know, whatever. And so yeah. it was, you know, one of those things. Um, and you see him, I was telling him that I have to, um, I have to buy a car. And he was like, yeah, I don't buy this depreciating assets. He's like, my uh, Silverado, I think it's like a, 98 he was like <laughs> I, I, i'm gonna uh i'm gonna just ride this to the wheels full of them and like, that's how it is and that's how it is like you'd be surprised that whole check, that whole millionaire next door you didn't mind <laughs> when yeah. we left that closing table yeah that whole <laughs> millionaire next door thing is real so um so one thing i want to speak on before we get you out of here is i was very impressed like with your son how he picked up on he was paying attention he was he was actually into it so how important yeah. is it to you as a mother to make sure that your children are getting this, say, this game as you build this business out? It's so important. And I think, it, I mean, I think that the, the, the reason why he's so, one, he likes money. And two, <laughs> he, he is, um, he's always been, he's been the, the kid, like my, my 
daughter, she's more of a free spirit. So she's creative and he's more like, he was on the show once with me. He, you know, he was two, three years old. I got a picture of him like doing a lockbox. You know what I mean? So he was already like, he, he grew up in it. Um, and so he, he always says like, I can't wait till I get my real estate license. And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> but he's going to be him. Like you got to Like he's, he tells me like, I'm just, you know, I, I'm very regular. I drive a Toyota, you know, like no expensive bags. I got, I got deeds. I don't got bags. Right. I heard and that. So he's like, mom, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get a, a, a Gucci belt or a, a Louis Vuitton briefcase or something. I'm like, like no son, he's going to be the one that you're going to see him on a billboard or, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 cause he always says, he's like, um, even when I was telling him I was doing an interview with you guys, he was like, oh, you, uh, you want to get a Louis Vuitton uh, shirt or something? I'm like, no. He was like, I'm like, you can just take it back, mom. I was like, no. He was like, people want to see that you're making money. I was like, people don't need to see that I'm making money. First of all, yeah, they don't need to see that. They yeah. just need to <laughs> Not at all. I can help. <laughs> and, and I just want to repeat they, something real quick you to- just said. You said to the people out there, I don't have bags. I have deeds. Wow. Wow. That's fine. No, I think we just found the name of this episode. Because, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's just one of those things. It's just like, but no, so I started him because of course, like every other kid in America, he's a Fortnite kid and he wants to buy these PlayStation cards and all this stuff. And I'm like, son, you're not I can't keep like this is like a habit, like twenty five dollars here every time I go to Target, like this is crazy, right? So what he did was he um, he started a candy business. So we live we live over in um, over in the uh, in the burbs, and so there's not like corner stores everywhere. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. I went to Sam, when I would go to Sam's Club, he would go and he would grab a bunch of candy, and then he would resell it to his friends at school. And so what he did is what he did was he would resell the candy to his friends, and then. The school was like, oh, well, you can't really sell the candy in school, blah, blah, blah. So what, what he did was he would have the kids sell it on the school bus for him. So what he would do is... He, <laughs> Enterprise, he, he it runs in the blood, right? Like, Yo, <laughs> he was like, mom, I need change for a 20 or something like that. Because like he was making a lot of money. Like, because the kids would want the candy, he would have it, they would pay dollars, like he was making like $80 every turnaround. It was, it was wow. crazy. Like it was insane. And so then things, things kind of slowed down. I was like, what happened? He was like, well, they said that I can only sell it after school, but he, you know, he's on the school bus. So what he would do is have, he would sell it. And then two of his friends would sell it on the school bus. And then every morning they would meet back up and he was like, yeah, I need change for a five. Cause yesterday he was trying to not give me the rest of my money because I have changed, I need change. Like it was crazy. So he, I told him, you know, that was last year. So this year he was like, I'm not going to mess with the candy. Um, I I bought him a, a vending machine, and we're trying to, we're going to get it um, at where he gets his haircut, um, get it over there, and, and get him to um, get that going. But wow. I told him, I'm like, son, you, you got to make some money because that you got to keep up your habit. So really, he's just feeding his habit. Now he's saving. A little bit of it, but for uh-huh. the most part, he's able to buy um, Z bucks or V bucks or whatever it is. He's able to buy that because of the you know what he but does. That's dope and though, because it's a lesson in that. A lot of times, people like a lot of investors, I can say that. Like, if I want something, I'll go buy an asset and have that asset pay for the exactly. stuff I want. So. Exactly, and so he and so that's the only way that he's able to get the V bucks is if he does some type of activity. So. Of course, he loves Teslas. So he, so I'm like, all right, we'll look at the stock and see what's going on with Tesla, and then we'll buy a Tesla. And if it makes some money, then he makes some money. We bought Tesla, it made some money, so he made some money. You know what I mean? It dropped a little bit, but then he. So his motivation, and and I'll take it. I'll take the motivation, whatever it is. Yeah, but his motiva- also he's getting exposure to things that you know what I mean, like uh, you know, at his age. Um, so that's just very mm-hmm. impressive. That's very impressive. So yeah, he, I I'll take it. I told him like you know whatever you want to focus on, as long as I don't have to pay for those V bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so so listen listen Jazz, I will not like take too too much of your time. Listen, you have all kinds of amazing things going on, but I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, before we get out of here. 
you have an amazing journey. Um, you're very enterprising. You got the deeds. You got, you got everything going on. What, what was like a, um, one of your biggest hurdles that you had to get over in terms of your, your business life to get you where you are today? Yeah, um, definitely just, just uh, the confidence in myself and in my business um building it and Malik will tell you when I first started I was like I don't know he's like man you had the best ideas in the world like that execution hitting the execution button on things and not being afraid and not being afraid to fail because you know we could sit here we we didn't talk about the failures and the almost close to foreclosures and all of the type of stuff that I experienced because it was just like I was willing to take that risk um, not, you know, not really knowing what would happen, right? Um, so the, 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 the not being scared, because me not being scared has gotten me to this point. And I'm not, I'm not a millionaire yet, but, I, you know, I, I'm holding. <laughs> so I, I heard I'm, that. I heard yeah. that. I can read between doing, the lines. I said, I, I hear you. Um, I, I'm doing well enough to be able to, you know, confidently, my daughter, she has one more school, one more year in high school. Um, and, um, you know, she can go to whatever, if she wants to go to college, her mom can send her to college. Um, and, and that was just really, you know, one of my, my biggest, my biggest uh, goals to be able to do that and, and, and do it without, without her having to take yeah. student loans I could tell how fearless you are from the way you jump right into the market. Like, like you just, yeah, yeah, no, she, was, you, she was running face first into the market. I had to slow it. They're like, Oh, slow down. <laughs> You need some education, lady. You gonna yeah. kill yourself? Don't She's go fearless. bust. She's fearless. Yeah, like you know don't go bust the head yet. But you learn from yeah. that too. You learn from that too, though. So you know. Um. Yeah, yeah, man. But no, <laughs> man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta put together a workshop or something. Because Absolutely, we definitely gonna work together. Yeah, yeah, we definitely yeah, you, work we, together. That's, that's definitely on. That's online. online. You know, we, we are all, we are all about community. We all about community. Yeah, so anything you need from my, us, let us know. In my uh, position, they just not even you know young realtors. Um, you know, just young women, they're just like, I have young women hitting me up all of the time. Like, you know, I'm getting income tax money. They may have already bought their, you know, their for, their primary residence. Not really ready to be a landlord is not really for everybody. I don't tell everybody to do it. But to be able to have um, some sort of investment, I'm like, okay, well, what about a small business? Not everybody is really, you yeah. know, small business. That's material. that lifestyle design. You have to know what works for you. You have to do what works for me. And so now it's just like um, the trend, like I said, the stock thing and people are, are like, well, what, what do I do? I had a girl like, all right, well, how do I, I'm like, this is not a, con first of all, I'm not even certified or qualified to have this conversation with you. But if you want to, um, you know, learn, here goes some resources that I started out with. Um, so we, we got to put something together, guys. That, absolutely. Like, really absolutely, absolutely. Definitely will. For and, sure. That's one thing I tell people, listen, doesn't matter what you do. If you don't even want to get into the stock market, you can, you can buy the S and P 500 and just go to sleep every night because just owning that last year would have got you 30% when your bank accounts getting you nothing. So, nothing. you know, um, there's something for everybody to, uh, yeah, own something. People, I don't think, I think that people are, everybody is like, it's the, it's, 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 it's scary. Um, because you know, um, you know, even the stock, like I said, the stock today, everybody's like, oh, you can only buy it for $5. I'm like, yeah, like, how do you do it? I'm like, what, you got to have a minimum? Like, no, you just go right on the app yeah. and buy it. And Technology just, has changed everything. Man. Technology can, can you, has changed I, everything. You guys have been in this for a long time. Can you yeah. admit, I mean, I, I remember when I even thought about stocks, um, you had to make a phone call and call yep. somebody to buy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The first, yeah, the first thing I bought it, cost me like 40-something bucks, and I had to call somebody and then wait for the order to be filled, and then they would send you the certificate in the mail. It was completely nuts, and now I'm like, I'm looking at all these apps, and like, even the big boy brokerages are free now. I'm like, people don't realize just how the barrier to entry is so much lower, and it's so easy to own so things. Lower. It's so like, things. so what I've been doing is I do $10 a day. I mean, I did buy more today because of, you know, yeah. because of the was but i do i put ten dollars because i'm like what do i spend ten dollars on a day <laughs> pepsi or wawa and i and i every morning before i go out i i, I do that i wake up at five o'clock every day i look at what's doing well dave has been 
um, teaching me a lot of like, he's like study it every day for 30 minutes. Um, so that, that, that's the stock life is, this is me. This is, this is the new me. I, pretty pretty dope. So let me ask you last, last question before we get out of here. Is there any like book or something that you've read that has given you like inspiration or anything along this journey? For sure. I read a lot. So, but I would say if, if you somebody a couple, were a couple books, if you want to, yeah, you know. yeah. the one, uh, the one thing by Gary Ke- Keller and Jay Papazan, that's probably one of my favorites. I actually, that's where I pull a lot of the, um, budgeting principles that I teach my clients. I pull it from there. They also the uh, riches man in Babylon. George I Classic, pull yep. all of the budgeting principles from there. I follow Dave Ramsey. I don't really follow his, um, his credit things because obviously credit is something that yeah. really, you know, propels my business. Um, so I don't necessarily follow it to a T, but I do think that he has some good principles there. Yep. Um, yep. You know, I'm a TD Jakes fan. Um, so all of his books, um, business books, I, I'm a bigger pockets fan too. Okay. Um, so, you know, all, all of the things over there I've read. Um, I mean, the thing about it is that instead of us filling our brains with this, you know, this crap that's on the radio, I mean, one time what? I turned the radio, heck, like, this is crazy. Yo. I'm either on an Audible or I'm um, on a podcast. So I'm Absolutely. on a bigger podcast. Um, and there's an Airbnb podcast that I listen to that I love. Um, you know, some of the um, the local people that I know that they have podcasts, I'll, I'll tune in there. But man, hold up! This I was a, this an Airbnb podcast? Is it like is it catered to investors or? Um, so it's two women that are um that 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 do it, and they just they cover like a spectrum. I, I'll I'll send you the link. Yeah, send me the um, link to that. I've I've never heard that one. You know, I'm a podcast. I'm a podcast yeah. junkie. So yeah, podcast junkie. You'll you'll definitely get a good um a good feel of what the business like. They talk about. The very good stuff and the very not so good stuff. Um, Because Airbnb, like in anything, anything in investing, it has its ups and downs. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of great information right there. So you know, you get a lot of first is one of my, especially with um, building the business up and Mm -hmm. and and you know my accounting system because I didn't have one. That's the one thing that we don't learn um, when we first start business, like. Yeah, you need a separate. <laughs> you need books. You need. Yeah, you need yeah. a bookkeeper. You need an accountant. So just keeping that together. Um. So I, I read proper first. You guys read that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that one I have. The only one I didn't. Um. It, actually, I own the book. Uh, the Gary Keller book. The um. The one. The one. The one thing. But I've read like three of his other ones. I read Millionaire Real Estate Agent, Millionaire Real Estate Investor. Like I read all those, but I actually own that one. Just didn't get to it yet because. Yeah. I got. I love books, and I'm like, you know. What are you reading? I got Right now, I just finished a book called um, Home Wrecker. Um, okay. and now I'm reading a book uh, that Kamari. Kamari have, you read Evicted? Book. have you read Evicted? 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 Yes, I have. I have. I have read that. Like that? I have, yeah, I, like I did. That. And the one yeah. I'm currently reading is a book called Family Wealth, which is pretty amazing. Kamari recommended this book to me. And it's interesting because you think it's one thing. It's called Family Wealth. And it is about money and finance, but it breaks down how a lot of it is not just about economics. When you talk about family wealth, it's mm-hmm. about how to structure trust and how to explain to your family what you're building. So God forbid something happens to you. They talk about if you don't have your paperwork or anything together, you, like, so everything you work for, if you don't have everything taken care of paperwork wise, it doesn't matter. But this family is it's pretty powerful. So that's what I'm reading now. Oh, but yeah, okay. I gotta yeah, I gotta pick that yeah. one up. And it's on, it's, on, it's on Audible too. It's called Family Wealth. I'll send you the link to that. Okay. okay. Uh, what I'm reading is um right now I'm reading when rocks cry out. Um just okay. because it doesn't it doesn't affect my writing. Like I'm writing and so I gotta read something that doesn't have anything um, to do with what I'm writing. So yeah. um what's so what's I'm reading when rocks yeah, I'm writing a, a, another book about time because that's all I care about. Yeah, for those for those watching and listening who haven't got our book, me and Corey have a book, Own Your Time and Space. You can go write to ownetimeandspace.com. Oh, I didn't know that. I oh, you didn't know that? Oh, yeah, me and Corey wrote a book together. Yeah, we'll make sure you get a copy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll, we'll get you a copy. Yeah, a signed copy. Yeah, we'll get you a copy. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. wrote a book last year. I wrote a um a journal on 
home ownership. So it was like 30 days in home ownership. And I didn't think that I could write a book, uh-huh. but I did. And it did. We, we released it on a Black Friday weekend. Okay. Man, that book writing, that's a whole nother stream Absolutely. of income. Right. <laughs> See? And that's another <laughs> thing, right? Another that's, passive a, that's, stream a income. Whole, that's a whole thing, man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, so many people are making so much. It's not even the money. It's just like, just, you know, who would have thought, like, me this single mom would have been an author and I have something that people, I, I sold 150 copies of my book the first week and it came out. Like, it's amazing. Really? Like, and, and see, but, but, but this is the thing though. And it's it just to the people out here uh, watching, listening, um, you have expertise in something, right? And a lot of times when you work in, like, no matter, like you may work as a nurse or something, but you still have expertise in something that the average person doesn't know. Um, and you'd be surprised that of the, the types of information that people want. So yeah, doesn't matter what your field is, like you know. Anyway, but yeah. jazz, listen. We could be um, here all night. So, but yeah, I really absolutely. Do. So, I, I just want to tell you, listen. We definitely appreciate you. Um, con- Thank continue, you. I appreciate continue, continue success, and like you know, we're gonna look forward to following you. We're gonna do some work together in the community. We definitely will, and we'll have you back yeah, on definitely. later on this year after you know you 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 flipping all this Airbnb, so you can teach us again. <laughs> But I just right. want to say thank you for your time because we know how valuable that is. Um, and keep up the good work. That's all I want to say. I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And to the fans out there listening, make sure you share this episode because uh, Jasmine is amazing. She's doing an amazing thing. So make sure you share this. Get this out there so people can see what she's doing in the area. And we'll put her contact info um, within the show notes so you can um, get in contact with her. If in you- her Airbnb joint. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can uh, get in contact with her. Um. So also, listen, we got the Body Hood merch. You can find that as well in the um, description. So we got that out there now as well. Um, and as we always say, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Game elevates, and we'll talk to you all in the next episode. Peace.